What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here and it's Top 10 Thursday. You actually caught me right as I was playing one of my favorite handhelds of all time, the PSP. This thing has great graphics, smart design, and an incredible set of games. From hardcore RPGs to great open world action titles, this thing really has it all. But today, we're going to try and do the impossible and count down the best of the best on my list of the top 10 must play PSP games. Number 10. Castlevania The Dracula X Chronicles Richter Belmont comes from a long line of vampire hunters. His family exists for the single purpose of making sure that the monsters of hell are kept out of his lands. So when Dracula is suddenly revived in a far off village, it's up to him to slay the beast once again. This game is interesting to play even if you aren't into the Castlevania series. It has super simple controls, but deviously hard enemies that keep challenging you to improve your whipping skills with each level. The best part of all though is that this is really two games in one. If you can defeat the Dark Lord and save the day, you unlock the legendary classic Symphony of the Night. Doing that is going to require a lot of practice though, so get ready to die quite a bit. Number 9. Resistance Retribution when the PlayStation 3 was first being shown off, we got an early glimpse of a daring new franchise called Resistance. While other shooters of the era were all about blasting aliens or delving into World War II, this series went in a totally different direction, creating an alternate timeline where mankind is being wiped out by mysterious mutants. For the PlayStation Portable, they decided to do a spin-off that let us take on the role of a soldier who's basically gone mad after the death of his brother. It's our mission to break into Chimera strongholds and blow them up from the inside one by one. What I love most about this game was the wide range of foes we get to face. From simple ground troops to wall climbing snipers and even living bombs, you'll always need to make sure to have a lot of ammo and stay on your toes. Number 8. Silent Hill Origins it's not often that a game can absolutely terrify me even when I'm sitting in a crowded room, but Silent Hill Origins definitely achieves that. Taking place shortly before the events of the original Silent Hill, we play as Travis Grady, a trucker who ends up in this cursed town on the day they're attempting to perform a grand satanic ritual. When trying to save a little girl from a burning house, he stumbles into a confusing mess of cults, nightmarish creatures, and a plot that could cause the end of the world. During all of this, he's also being hunted by a strange, human-like monster called the Butcher that is willing to cut down anything in its path to get to Travis. This is the kind of game that constantly leaves you feeling unsafe. Even when I had a huge weapon in my hands and a ton of medkits in my inventory, I was genuinely scared about what could possibly be behind the next door. Number 7. God of War Chains of Olympus Kratos, the killer of gods, wasn't always a free man. When he was first given his amazing powers, he was forced to do 10 years of service to the deities of Olympus in payment for the strength he was given. When Helios, Lord of Light, goes missing, the world is covered in darkness, and now our angry hero is assigned the difficult duty of finding him and bringing light back to the universe. This of course means that he'll have to battle basilisks, crush cyclops, and generally get himself in some bloody bad trouble. This game works so well on a handheld because all fights are extremely fast. You're traveling from place to place, breaking bones and gaining experience, all without having to sit through long cutscenes. It's the best parts of God of War without any of the nonsense. If you're craving insane action that you can carry in your pocket, this is the title for you. Number 6. Pat Upon 3 Imagine if somebody managed to take the high energy of something like Guitar Hero and the intense strategy out of a title like Warcraft and molded them together into their own game. What you'd end up with would surely be similar to Patapon. 
While I think the first two entries in this franchise are awesome, this is where the gameplay was truly perfected. Control is very unique in this game because you don't directly interact with your party. The little guys you command only know what to do when you play the correct beat. Essentially, this means that by tapping out songs, they'll know when to attack, defend, or use special moves. It may look simple on the surface, but the combat is fascinatingly complex. Building a balanced army is important, and you can customize everything to fit your playstyle. There's a bizarre joy to watching these tiny units clash in the field, earning them cool upgrades and new ways to fight. Sony, if you somehow see this, seriously, give us another title like Patapon. Number 5. Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories a great spin-off can be rare. Normally, when companies start trying to branch out established plot lines, the final product can feel watered down or not as fun. That is the exact opposite of the way Rockstar Games handled making Vice City stories. This is a direct prequel to the original Vice City, following Victor Vance on his own journey to take over the town right before Tommy Versetti shows up and unleashes his wave of destruction. There's a fantastic sense of humor in this game that makes every quest hilarious. Hilarious. Working together with drunk gun nuts, going to war with very inept drug dealers, and even one mission where you have to hack a cleaning robot that has a dildo for an arm. The key feature that made this stand out from the rest of the series was the Empire Building. You could take over your rival's property, building it into whatever business you want, and slowly improve it to make millions. It was a basic system, but it really helped the world feel more alive. There's a stark realism to actually getting to construct your own illegal kingdom one brick at a time. Number 4. Tactics Ogre Let Us Cling Together when it comes to turn-based tactical RPGs, most people immediately think of Final Fantasy Tactics, when really the true creator of this genre was a smaller franchise that spent years stuck in Japan. Tactics Ogre Let Us Cling Together was first released back on the Super Nintendo in 1995 and was immediately considered a breakout fan favorite. Thankfully, over a decade later, this top-notch game found new life on the PSP. This is a complete remastering of the project with new music stunning voice acting, and an intriguing ability to rewind time and go back through major parts of the plot to make different choices and alter the world. Gameplay is all about carefully outsmarting your enemies by moving around the battlefield to flank them or just slamming them with brute force. With strong magic, sharp swords, and an even sharper mind, you can cleave a path through even the harshest of environments. At its core, what really kept me coming back to this game was the deep story. Behind every unit you defeat is a thousand and more willing to take their place, all because of a wonderfully written conflict between these massive armies. Number 3. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep I really respect the developer who can take an older idea and do something completely unique with it. Kingdom Hearts has certainly had its fair share of side stories, but this one will always be the one I liked most because it told its tale in such an intriguing way. There isn't a straightforward hero in this game, but instead a team. These three students are training to become Keyblade Masters. While they all may be taking the same classes, they actually learn to fight in very different ways. Whether it be going flat out crazy in physical combat or taking things ranged with hardcore spells, you choose a character and stick with them and make sure they don't get completely overwhelmed by waves of monsters. The blend of Final Fantasy style, Disney worlds, and intertwining plots makes for a gameplay experience that is totally one of a kind. For those of you who love going on adventures with friends, there's even a bonus mode that lets you play co-op with friends on nearby PSPs. All around, this is a title that works beautifully on its own or as part of the bigger Kingdom Hearts universe. The only downside is you may need to stay close to your charger cable because once you start, there's no way you're going to want to put it down. Number 2. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker Hideo Kojima has crafted many masterpieces in his career, and yet somehow Peace Walker still ranks among his best work ever. In this, Big Boss has just left the military and decided to form his own squad outside the boundaries of other nations. They wouldn't worry about politics or laws, all that mattered was getting missions done and saving everyone they could. When a weird group of hyper-advanced soldiers begin showing up in Costa Rica, Boss and his troops fly in to check it out. What makes this game 
functions so brilliantly as a handheld stealth game is that each objective can be done in less than 10 minutes. While the overall story is built into hours of intricate character interaction, missions themselves can be beaten in a relatively short amount of time. The real test is finding ways to score a good rank on every map to earn the true ending. Staying out of sight, avoiding unnecessary violence, and capturing targets can improve your points and unlock badass weapons to take into later maps. Honestly, Peace Walker is just one of those games that's more fun the longer you play it. Discovering all the hidden tricks of this game kept me entertained for over 200 hours. Number 1. Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Sometimes what fans crave most is just a new view on an existing universe, a fresh take on an already beloved idea. Crisis Core gives us a very new look on Final Fantasy VII, letting us take on the role of Zack, a man who just enlisted with Shinra to take part in the Wutai War. He may be young, but don't let that fool you, he's already an incredibly deadly fighter. Seeing his talents, they quickly promote him, giving him access to even more dangerous missions. While the original Original Final Fantasy VII was your typical JRPG, Crisis Core shakes things up by being an all-out action game. Swinging his giant blade around to slay foes is surprisingly easy, but feels really good. Mastering the dodge mechanics and leveling up magic all works perfectly. This is the type of game that lays out harder and harder challenges in front of you, and yet doesn't get frustrating, just more satisfying when you win. If that wasn't cool enough, it's also packed full of insane cutscenes. Watching all these flawed heroes interact and deal with their problems in gorgeous CGI is wonderful. I've beaten Crisis Core from start to finish over 20 times now just because I find the pacing of combat and plot stellar. For its phenomenal battle system, interesting story, and hundreds of fun side quests, I'm awarding this my pick as the PSP game absolutely everyone should play. Did your favorite game not make the list? Got an idea for a future top 10? Leave it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Now I need to hurry up and get started on my research for next week. We're going to be talking about horror games for the rest of the month, and I want to start out with this special translated version of Clock Tower. This is the original Clock Tower, only released in Japan. And you know what? I've heard it's pretty spooky, so I gotta get to work. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, maybe check out my last video. Please subscribe, and if you want, share this somewhere with your friends.